Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 136. You know what I'm 36 for? <laughs> More Ian Gibson. Hello, thank you for being 37 for me. You're welcome. And before I thirsty eat him up, Jake Terrio is here. Hello. Hi, yeah, sorry I wasn't able to make it the last two weeks at That's family okay. in town. And I have a brief anecdote about that that okay. we can talk about in the chit 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 uh, chitty chats. Please present your anecdote. Oh, okay. So uh, well, my mother-in-law was here. She had flown in from uh, Scotland to stay with us, and um, I can't. Remember, last week or maybe it was the first week, somebody was like, "Oh, there's a guest. <laughs> can't make it." Jake, can you make it? And I'm like, "No, I can't make it. I'm sorry. All my computers were out in the other room." Uh, and uh, my mother-in-law was like, well, what's what? Why don't you just do? And I'm like, no, it's it'll I'll be here. I'll be loud in whatever. Don't worry about it. Keep watching TV. And then she was like, well, where's your podcast? Can I listen to it? And Hazel was like, mom, you're not you're not going to oh, no. you're not going to oh, want no. it. She's like, it's it's pretty boring. And she's like, how do you know it's boring? She's like, Because I hear Jake recording it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my anecdote. Oh boy. Sorry, I was just laughing because I was thinking about this 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 woman flying all the way from Scotland just to sleep on a couch in Chicago. <laughs> like... Oh yeah. It was this one. Right here. Amazing. Oh boy. Sorry, I was trying to find bagpipe That's music fair. and everything I searched literally <sighs> wasn't bagpipes. <laughs> I was like, I searched bagpipe music. Like my dad has a has a set of bagpipes. Has he shown for a them comedy to law No, he bought them Let's for a call. comedy bit. Uh, to he and my 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 he and my mom were involved in the Christmas cabaret in Southern California for a time, and my dad was coming up with bits about like why are there no Scottish Christmas carols, and so he was playing the Scottish character, <laughs> and he had the bagpipes, <laughs> and he actually he had some trouble sourcing like legit bagpipes that he could use for the bit and he was he would go on to like bagpipers forums and be like hey where can i get like a cheap set of bagpipes here's the bit that i'm trying to do and all these bagpipe people being like how dare you we're not going to tell you <laughs> where to them. get bagpipes uh, good for, for them for this reason <laughs> but he did eventually them. find a set of bagpipes and uh, it sounds wow. terrible we did see that video That's of him crazy. being spanish uh, a ma ma mastodon What's the? When did I show this to you? Extra uh, life. You showed extra us like life. two hours of Terrio footage and the extra insurance life. Uh, and um and the and the the flat out commercial. Oh yeah, the flat yeah. out commercial. Yeah, and, and the, the and the guy, the, the big band guy that Karen's grandmother loves. Raycon F. Yeah, yeah, and the Raycon oh Snares. And the... Man, I forgot. I've walked you through my life. I forgot Raycon F. I has the Addison's haircut in. Tears of the Kingdom is Ray Conniff's hair. <laughs> it's the same exact oh. haircut. If there are any 80-year-old people listening right now who have also <laughs> played Tears of the Kingdom, they're going to love this <laughs> reference. Oh, we're, we're, we're a hit. They put us on... It really gets them in the mood at the senior citizen home. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not really listening. Jesus. Um, but sometimes you can hear Just us wait over until, the climaxes. Like, Wait until we're old, and then like one day we're gonna be at the nursing home, and somebody's gonna play like the Wii Shop music, and we're gonna fucking lose our shit for and it. <laughs> my roommate and I in college, my roommate and I were in the jazz ensemble, and we had this exact conversation because we would go to old folks' homes, and you know we'd play, you know, we'd Frank Sinatra them. and like Benny Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, what are they gonna play? What are the kids gonna play when we're all in retirement homes? Are they gonna come in and do like play WAP like, little little band arrangements of WAP? <laughs> And and Justin Bieber, what are what's what is this gonna be? Okay, but, look, yeah. let's be honest. It's just gonna be only Taylor Swift. It's yes, gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a bunch of high schoolers who can't really play the instruments that well, playing uh yeah playing Taylor's versions of all Taylor's songs. What are you doing over there? You're banging away. <laughs> Daddy Scott, Hard Mountain Dew. Number hard two. Mountain Dew. <laughs> I'm on vacation. Well, wow, Will, are you taking a stance? <laughs> uh, you know what? Can we talk about the Bud Light controversy for a second? Only within the rights. context. <laughs> uh, when that whole controversy was going down, I was like, you know what? 
I should go buy some Bud Light. And I did. And I regretted it because <laughs> Bud Light tastes like shit. Yeah. But they stand <laughs> and, for something. You know Yes, they stand for something, but sometimes it's suffering standing for something. <laughs> In particular, when it, you feel like you have to drink Bud Light. It's okay. I have a box of High Life that I'm going to bring uh, this weekend. I'm seeing Ian this weekend. Oh, yeah. Meeting up for our <gasps> annual consummation of our marriage. <gasps> <laughs> consummation. <laughs> I think Ian's going to try topping his <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm a middle. <laughs> middle. Oh, um, no, we're going be great. to the, uh, uh, we're going to that retro game, retro, retro, retro world expo. And I only remember that because I've already come up with a great acronym for it. R W X. Pretty good acronym. Not for saying, but for writing on things being like R W X, like my Google maps list. RWX. I wrote that on the eight millimeter tape. RWX. Congratulations, yeah. bud. So be great. Anyways, we're gonna go buy a bunch of retro stuff. We're gonna play some board games, and we're gonna see what the fuck's going on in Hartford, Connecticut. That's how they sound in Hartford, Connecticut, how right? How you doing, Hi, Hartford, <laughs> Connecticut. You ready Welcome. to go? <laughs> Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, folks, uh, this is Local Chat. We're here to talk about video games and all sorts of things. Uh, here in the Chit Chat section, Ian has written Twisted Metal. I assume yes. the Pecock series? Yes, that's right. <laughs> I have sampled the Pecock series, <laughs> Twisted Metal. I actually finished it about 15 minutes ago. Jesus. Um, is that what you we were working about on? <laughs> No, man, I had a fucking rough day and then it ended late and I was like, I haven't even packed and shit. Anyways, I tried to bail on this podcast, but these fuckers were like, oh, that means we never have to do the podcast again. And they tried to <laughs> you, dear listeners, out of an That's episode. And I said, true. fuck you guys, we're doing it. Anyways, um, I finished the Twist Metal series on Peacock with Anthony Mackie and uh, I forget her name, but she's from Brooklyn Nine-Nine and it has a lot of people in it, actually. Um... We talked last week about how I could not recommend it, but there was some funny stuff in it. And honestly, I think I'm just barely tipped into recommend because the last couple episodes got very good. I don't know. No, not very good. The last episodes got good. <laughs> and, Tolerable. And it had a very good, like, I don't want to say twist, but a good reveal at the end that I really enjoyed. And um, if I may time. tell you a recurring joke in the series that I particularly enjoyed, that will tell you of the brand of humor in this series when it works, which is once or twice per episode. Uh, <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church, you guys know Thomas Hayden Church from Wings. The Sandman. Yes, the Sandman. Um, he like sand, plays a villain... Yes, that's right. He plays a villain and uh, he has this line that happens twice and it's very funny. And basically, there's like two people in front of him and he has them at like gunpoint. And he's just like, I hate to break up, you lovers. And the guy goes, It's not my lover, she's my sister. We have the same mom and dad. And he goes, I know what a brother and sister is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like so stupid he's like i know what a brother and sister is and then like five episodes later he has like these two underlings and he goes there's something going on between they're like and he's like no 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 that's my brother we have the same mom and dad he goes i know what a brother and sister is <laughs> well, we like to call so it if you're airplane willing, humor <laughs> yeah so if you're willing to watch 10 half hour episodes Ooh, in they're which only you will 30 have, minutes yeah they're 30 minutes with the peacock ads basically okay. Um, if you're willing to watch 10 episodes for maybe eight good jokes across the series, but a genuinely good episode and a pretty good ending. Yeah, sure. I mean, go ahead. Um, that's the best I can give you on Twisted Metal. It's getting a second oh, yeah? season, which is honestly pretty good because they ended it on a pretty fucking good cliffhanger. Do you guys want me to spoil it for you? No, you, you shouldn't watch this. You shouldn't watch this. No, I'm actually going to watch it now. Okay, that's fair. You should we watch it. We went from a soft recommend to you shouldn't watch this within the span of like 10 seconds. I just wanted to talk about the ending because the ending, it's, it's not that it's amazing. It's just that it's 
very well done compared to the rest of the fucking series. How, mm. how does so, the show compare to Halo? It's about the same quality, honestly. Some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. I think Halo more stuff works, though. But I know you guys won't agree with that opinion. <laughs> no, nothing worked in it. So because I, I think more agree. worked more worked for me in Halo than did for you. So I don't think you guys would like Twisted Metal at all. Yeah. Also, I'm you're just sure broken. Say, yeah. So I don't know why I asked. <laughs> so well, uh, my my question after I like the first couple trailers were didn't really do anything for me, but then I started seeing people share clips of it that kind of leaned into this kind of uh like absurdist kind of humor not quite Very absurd verhoven esque but closer to something like the running man than mad max is that maybe accurate i i think that's i can't think of i'm not saying it's perfect but i can't think of a better thing than uh verhoven silliness plus uh running man um the problem i have with it is that it's aiming for that tone, but it really only hits the joke about 25% of the time. At sure. Best. Sure. So it definitely, it, it is not trying to be serious. Um, it's basically just the quality of the dialogue and the acting that brings it down. Like it has the right tone and everything. It's just not quite delivering on it. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. Yeah. It's uh got some funny stuff in it it's got a great up too there's this one app talked about it last week i think it's like episode three where it's kind of like last of us where it's just like for some reason is way more touching and way better than the rest of the fucking series <laughs> it's not as drastically different as episode three of last of us but it is like at the end of it i was like wow that was actually very well done you know compared mm. to the rest of the series so um if you're thinking about it, maybe. That's the best I can say. If you're thinking about it, maybe. And this is... Is, okay. is there a minimum threshold you would recommend watching before you're like, okay, that's not for me? One I'd have to look it up. I, 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 think it's, I think it's episode three or four. I would at least get through the good episode. Okie dokie. That, that, that will tell you, hey, when it is firing, which is rare, it's good. I'll look Okie up the dokie. episode number. Silence, please, while I do this. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I'm, 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 I'm. Yep, folks. Uh, moving on Busted. here. <laughs> Sorry, I was stuck on repeat. Uh, Pete and repeat. Uh, let's move on to the games we've been playing this week. Jake Terrio, you have been playing a plethora of video games here compared to the disgusting mass of grossness Ian and I have been playing. So please. Tell, tell me about the first game, because I have heard about this game, and I want to know more about it. Yeah, so Thronefall, the uh, early, new early access game from Grizzly Games, makers of Islanders. Um, but it is a tower defense-like, um, in that same kind of minimalist, soft art style that Islanders is. Um, it's um, It's definitely interesting. It's there's a lot packed into the early access. I I played the early access front to back in I could look it up on Steam, but probably three or four hours. Um, but I was still kind of consistently unlocking new stuff as as I cleared levels and whatnot. It is um, the tower defense aspect is interesting because you don't necessarily have the same kind of freedom that if you're coming at it from a more quote traditional like tower defense uh experience it's mm -hmm. not that it's more like almost almost it's got almost like a real-time strategy element to it where you start by building a like a home base and mm -hmm. then that unlocks nodes around it where you can place a barracks or a tower or a house or a windmill. And then for every new thing you build, more nodes unlock. So you don't have like freedom to construct whatever you want, wherever you want. It's all very defined. And so you start learning 
okay, well, I should build this so that I can build this so that I can build that. And it has kind of that RTS feel to it of like min maxing the order in which you build things so that you can have all the right defenses for when, you know, whatever new thing shows up. Um, so definitely interesting. It's very, I think it's got a, a, a fair amount of uh, variety in uh, enemy type and like the upgrades that you can pick, but on the whole, it is still relatively shallow as far as a gameplay experience goes. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they iterate on it and keep developing it as it goes through early access. Uh, that's that's one, cool. Those are my thoughts on Thronefall. It's got a nice look to it. I yeah. like that look. It looks very nice. And you you just navigate your little hero character and you can have like once you start generating other units, they can follow you. Waffle, please. Um he hates it. But um he just doesn't want me to be chatting. Um but yeah. Do you guys do you guys remember in, in Force Awakens when Finn says Joy please? Yes. Do you remember when he said that? I don't remember specifically, but I remember the moment. He's talking to what's his name, R two B two or whatever, and he's like, <laughs> "Help on. me out!" And the droid's like, "R two B two." You and he know looks at him. the character's name. I don't. I don't. You is it B two? No. <laughs> what is it? You know it. Is it oh BB eight? Is it BB eight? <laughs> oh, I remembered it suddenly. I don't. <laughs> He's, 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 on like, my wall. he's like help me out bb8 bb it's like beep, boop, beep, boop. and he's like droid please and it was just like i get it because he's black it's just <laughs> god i love new star wars anyway shit. sorry um uh, yeah i mean somehow palpatine has returned somehow palpatine <laughs> returned in Fortnite. <laughs> um yeah <laughs> Um, so other other quick hits. Um, I played two or three hours of Bomb Rush Cyber Funk, um, which good? Um, I, I I've been seeing stuff. I've been seeing talking about it, but it seems like it's a bad time to release a video game right now. So I can't tell if it's great and being buried or not. Uh, I will say uh, art style, music, uh, gameplay, 10 of 10. I had to kind of readjust my expectations after a, a little bit of gameplay because it feels very much like a game that would have come out a year after Jet Set Radio, where uh. it has kind of a deliberate clunkiness to it in terms mm. of like they'll drop you into sort of an open world environment and give you a thing to do but they're not going to tell you explicitly where to go to do that or how to go to do that. You have to kind of intuit it from going around Fuck the world. Um, Fuck that, folks. We're beyond that. <laughs> but it feels really good to play. Um, and I'm excited to get more into it. But um, yeah, I had to adjust. I had a couple of moments where I'd be like, wait, where, where am I going next? What am I doing next? And, I'd, and then I realized, oh, wait, I saw a character go do something over there. That was what is that? That was my prompt to go over that way and check that out. Um, but I was expecting like the first thing you need to do is you know you tag a bunch of stuff to gain reputation to attract the attention of a rival gang. And so I was kind of expecting at some point after gaining enough reputation, the game would be like, "All right, you've got enough rep. Now go to this place." But it doesn't do that. Mm. Um, like a game of the era would not have done that. Um, so certainly aesthetically, sonically, technically, very, very cool. Um, but um, needs some, I needed to get my head right before <laughs> continuing it to properly appreciate it. Um, Understood. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I rolled credits on Avalanche 2015 Mad Max game. Uh, my second full playthrough of it um and um that game's pretty good it's got some jank but it's pretty fun i, I just like remember it. playing it until i got to the first time you have to clear an outpost which is fairly early and i was like i don't really want to do this <laughs> it does not have enough 
vehicular action, I would say, for yeah. a game that is branded as a Mad Max game. Um, and I'm also I'm in the middle of writing a script about it because the ending is pretty bleak. Um, whereas like yeah. I think Still Mad bad. Max, the original Mad Max film, is probably the bleakest of the four. Mm-hmm. Um, where yeah. Road Warrior and Beyond Thunderdome and Fury Road, you know, they all take place in kind of a very dour, bleak setting, but they all end kind of on fairly optimistic notes. Um, and this game is very much like, nah, it's bad. Like, and you can pick up, you get, you can, one of the collectibles is historic or history relics. And you can go around and pick them up. And they're usually, you know, photographs from the before time. And sometimes Max will um, have a bit of commentary about them. And there's one that's like a picture of like a 10 year old girl. And on the back, it's like, you know, Sophie's going to be president one day and save everybody. And Max looks at it and his commentary is like, I guess she failed. Oh, my (laughs) God. Yeah, that's great. (laughs) I like that. It wasn't Sophie's (laughs) choice. So, um, yeah, but um, good, I, I think I, I think it suffered being released the same year as Fury Road, um, where that was so good and kind of mm-hmm. got so many people back into the Mad Max franchise that then this game came out and was pretty different. You know, it has a lot of on foot brawling rather than just driving. Um, but um, I think, yeah, almost uh, almost 10 years on now. And uh, it's uh, I like it. I've and then I've been playing play more it. Destiny. Destiny? How was all the Destiny announcements and stuff? You know, I, I thought it was good. There's Ian, I will say, in, in an appeal to the new player onboarding system, they have a new thing now where they've... Uh, like a curated red. selection of missions of key story beats to kind of be like, hey, here's Boy. what's happened so far. No, I'm sorry. Destiny has been out for nine years now. Mm-hmm. This is basic fucking shit. So I, I cannot give them any benefit of the doubt on this. It's like reverse No Man's Sky. Like they started out pretty good and they've just fucking gone into the dirt with it. So I think narratively, though, they're still they're firing on all cylinders. Um, the they just story, don't know how to present the narrative is what I would say. I think it's interesting because the the further I kind of step back from it, um, it's it's almost maybe a little bit at odds with itself because I don't think it's a story they could tell in any other medium, but I also Mm -hmm. think the medium is kind of what's hamstringing it to be able to fully take advantage of the story that they're presenting. Um, Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this season's got some super cool stuff. And of course the stuff they teased for the final shape being the the big year 10 expansion for next year. Um, certainly is that what seems. it's, is, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's got, it's got it's a narrative, uh, heft, uh, so rather than spheres. I've seen pyramids. Is this it a, is a cylinder? Boot. The final shape. No, it's, do you, do you want me to sit here? And, it's a tesseract. And, and... No, fuck, no, fuck no, I don't. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, the decahedron. No, you can't think of it as an actual piece of geometry. It's more like a, like don't a call philosophical it a shape. state of being. So, the final um, shape of the universe. So, uh, Will and I had a brief discussion on uh, Roblox with Friends the other day. Mm. Um, and the question was basically, are they ever going to stop making destiny and my argument was i mean besides the obvious like yes at some point there would no longer be destiny but my argument was no they will not deliberately stop making it because of two things number one they have a dedicated audience that justifies them continuing to make either destiny 2 or destiny 3 expansions etc and number two they are not delivering quality content and so they know that they don't even necessarily have a high bar to clear to continue to make that profit and relevance and reception 
And so in my head, when I look at Destiny, I'm like, they don't really have any justification or motiv motivation to make the game better <laughs> or to stop making it. And so in my head, I'm like, I'm just done with Destiny because I don't trust them to ever make it better and they have no need to. What do you mean by better? Better. <laughs> Clearer. <laughs> Easier to get okay. into. Easier to sure. understand. Uh, e you know, sure, because uh, I think I think better loop. Gameplay, like the the moment to moment yeah. gameplay certainly is far better than it was nine yes. years ago. Um, but, but yeah, you're right. The there, moments, the, the yeah, the yeah. onboarding. I know from the from the showcase or prior to the showcase, they talked about they're they're creating a new team dedicated just to PvP to kind of be. That's the only part of the sandbox that they're working on. There, they are. They at several points during the showcase, they're like, "Final Shape is not the end of Destiny. We're gonna keep telling stories in this universe for you know." however long um but yeah i think you're right the dedicated the fact that there is you know a, a people who are like me more interested in the narrative than than the gameplay systems per se mm -hmm. um who i i want to see but at that at that point they could just you know feed me comics and books and tv shows if they decided to pull the plug on the game and just feed me this universe in other mediums i wouldn't necessarily mind that uh, <clears throat> I just want to play I... Ian's devil's advocate, uh, who's actually a great guy, uh, which is um, I haven't he played Destiny. Everything. What an asshole. <laughs> I, I haven't played Destiny since probably 2018. When did when did for was it Forsaken? When did Forsaken come out, as we called it? 2017 was Destiny 2. And so, yeah, 2018 was Forsaken. Yeah. So the best thing that I've ever played in Destiny. And that's the last time I played Destiny. Uh, with any semblance of playing Destiny. So I I would argue, and I don't know if you would agree, Jake, but I mm -hmm. would probably argue as someone who hasn't touched Destiny since 2018 that it is probably better today than it was in 2018. Yeah. But, I mean, like, I, like the caveat of being moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, when the game's firing on all cylinders, it rocks. But it's certainly far more confusing to navigate um, gotcha. as somebody... Even even Absolutely. you who played Forsaken and and Destiny Two Vanilla, um, the game has changed enough that it it would mm -hmm. be overwhelming even to returning players. Okay, I, that is what I wanted. Completely new players. That's what I wanted to see if it was true. Uh, uh, away from Ian just saying he thinks it's true. So. Well, we've got two new That's fair. subclasses. There are two new, yeah, two new subclasses since okay, then. Okay, Ian, and, and Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I just want to say, look, I'm coming from a place of I would like to play Destiny again. I would like to, but the problem is there is not enough positive change in my perspective to bring me back. And my question is really out of depression. It's not like No Man's Sky or Rainbow Six Siege when it first launched, where it they understood there was a problem with the game and they worked towards fixing it. It feels like with destiny, they're just kind of throwing shit at the wall at this point. Maybe that's a bit extreme, but it feels like they are just throwing random solutions in and they're not really working. So it's not that they're terrible, but I want to play destiny again. I don't think they're ever actually going to fix it in the way that, that I need it to be fixed. That's, that's my upsetting point. Well, once I once I assemble all these pieces of things that are being sent to me, like the like the severed appendages of a loved one, um, we can do like a like a some sort of lead up to the final shape. I can Sherpa all of you through. Oh, there's already through cross play, isn't there? Yeah, but if if I'm if I'm building myself a more powerful machine than my PlayStation, <laughs> I would rather play on that. That's fair. Fair. Anyways, yeah. I mean, I mean, we've talked about that before. Hopping back into Destiny as a crew, I want them to make the game better. Just a shame they haven't done it yet. <laughs> Listen, if Jake can do all the understanding and the annoyance stuff, then like as long as I can jump, jump, jump as long as I yeah. can jump in the game and not have uh, a heart attack, 
and I can be like, Jake, is this weapon good? And he says no, and I can delete it. Yeah. Then I'm okay with playing the game. Yeah, and, and tell me what to click in the menus and tell me what matters and doesn't, because that was my problem was every time I, can, I jumped in that I game. I can do that. And tell me who to shoot I was like, and let's hold the play. trigger for me, like in Ghost. And then it was like, there's 40 fucking quest markers, and half these people don't give you anything when you talk to them, and there's all these fucking things to do, and they're all kind of the same, and it's like, I don't know where to go where, and what the fuck is all this different gear shit happening, and it's just like like what the fuck is going on in this game so yeah if you took all of that out for me and you're just like we're going into this activity now shoot things i'd be like okay okay i can, I can do have fun that. with that also if they brought back sparrow racing i would be there in a heartbeat uh, yeah the yeah, best bro. thing they've ever yeah, done bro. literally the best Ugh. thing they've ever done and yeah. they won't bring it back yeah <sighs> Baldur's Gate 3. Ian Gibson, you are uh, you are so far into this that Steam no longer tells me your hour count. It just says 20 something hours recently. So, uh Oh, really? Well, I did I did install a mod. Um I installed a mod. <laughs> no, I kind of regret installing the mod because number one, it is painful to install mods in this game. You have to install like like at least one mod loader. And additional, depending on which mod you want to do, it's a, I've been fucking spoiled by Steam Workshop. Everything should be Steam Workshop compatible at this point. Um, yeah, I installed this mod. Look, inventory management in this game is a fucking nightmare and it's bad. It's bad. There's too much shit. They don't really give you enough options or sorting stuff in the menus. And I don't know why, but every single fucking inventory screen in the game, even playing at 4K, is too fucking tiny by default. <laughs> so you either have to scroll or constantly resize it. So anyways, I downloaded this mod called Bags of Bags. And the premise is that... So, Will, I don't know if you noticed this. I didn't notice it until after I downloaded the mod. But apparently in the base game, you know how you have that bag that is like camp supplies bag? Mm-hmm. So apparently when you pick up camp supplies, it's supposed to automatically go into that bag. Yeah. Um, I, I actually didn't notice that. I just sent that whole bag to my fucking camp because it was too heavy. <laughs> um, so anyways, I downloaded this mod that's bag of bags and it creates a bunch of bags like that. So I have an arrows bag. So now anytime I pick up an arrow, it automatically gets dumped in my arrow bag. So it's basically like automatic folders in your inventory. So that when you pick up certain things, they get dumped into like the armor bag or the potions bag, etc. Um, but the, pr the problem now is, number one, installing the mod, I lost achievements. Number two, my save hour count in the game restarted when I loaded the mod. So my save is like six hours old instead of like Speed 35 right. or 40. Um, and number two, it turns out that having everything in bags kind of sucks because, for example, in Baldur's Gate, when you go to shoot an arrow, there's this you click to shoot an arrow and then there's a cool menu at the bottom that is like you can shoot a normal arrow or you can do these types of arrow attacks, depending on your character, or you can use one of these special arrows. But if your arrows are in a bag, they don't show up in that menu, which means to fire the special arrows, you have to go to the bag and find the special arrow and then be like, right click, use this. So in long story short, I regret installing the mod because it doesn't fix the problem. And I don't think it's the mod's fault. I think the game's inventory system just sucks fucking shit. Am I wrong on this, Will? Uh, it, it, it's it's. Yeah, it's awful. I hate it. It's really annoying, yeah. especially when you characters that aren't in your party, you can't access their inventory unless you go and kick one person out of your inventory or out of your party and then go add them to your party oh. so you can get all the stuff that's in their thing. And also, it like <laughs> there are a bunch of chests and stuff at your camps. And so I was like, oh, cool. Let me put a bunch of stuff in these chests. And then I switched camp locations like because the camps arrange themselves depending on where you are in the world. And that chest wasn't there anymore. And I was like, oh, you didn't because there's one chest at the camp that is the same, but you put it in other ones. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh shit. So I had to travel all the way back to the <laughs> camp, like the beach place. And I thankfully oh everything God. was still there. And so I picked it all wow. back up. But I was just like, oh, fuck. Um, yeah, it is. Um, it is. I, I, so just just to make it clear, inventories can suck. And the inventory in this game it's okay, but the thing that makes it suck is, number one, it's a D&D &D game. You are constantly fucking picking shit up. Constantly. 
Number two, you constantly are dicking with that stuff in your inventory, moving it between people, comparing stuff, using it, etc. And number three, your character has a weight limit. Otherwise, they become encumbered. So you are constantly having to juggle your fucking inventory. So it's an OK inventory system. But because of how much the game makes you deal with it, it becomes a fucking nightmare having to deal with the inventory in this game. I will say it is not the worst inventory system in a video game this year. What's the worst? <sighs> oh, no. Yeah. So... <laughs> So some of the other things that I've, I, you know, that, that being said, I am still having fun with Baldur's Gate. I finished Act Two. Um, I saw some stuff on Twitter and people were like, you should really think about Act One as a tutorial. Act Two is when things get more serious. And the end of Act Two and beginning of Act Three is like, oh, no, my choices have consequences. <laughs> And that is very true, and it's just a continuation of some of the bonkers fucking choice trees in this game. Like, I ended up in a place where I don't think it was, I think it was slightly off the main quest, but I know that if I had not done three or four dialogue choices in a specific way, I would not have ended up in that place. And, and seeing other people play on Twitter... And even seeing like like uh, David from Save Data in our Discord was like, yeah, I got a bug saving this guy from Emerald Grove. And I'm like, who the fuck is that guy? And I looked it up and it's like some goblin in a cage. And I'm like, why are you trying to save a who the why the fuck are you trying to like he went down like a cold dialogue path to save that guy. And he had a couple bugs with it, but it was something the game was allowing him to do. And there was content down that path. And there's all sorts of other people doing that and people doing shit with Asterion, which is fucking reprehensible because that man's an asshole. And I immediately kicked him from my camp. But it's like there's it's the type of game where it's not choice trees where each branch is roughly the same and they all end up in the same place. It's like, no, there's fucking content in this game that I will never see unless I do five or six playthroughs and choose in the right way to go down there. And that's crazy to me. And and the other thing is the consequences that I've started to feel where I'm like, oh, I didn't do that path or I chose differently here. And a guy's just like, well, I guess I, I can't be in your party anymore because I got to go do this because you didn't really help me out there. And I'm like, OK, sorry, <laughs> I didn't didn't do that right, I guess. But sure. Um, and it feels fucking great. And I'll tell you about one moment in the game and this is not a spoiler this is a spoiler for story beats maybe three hours in so not a spoiler and number two i am telling you the choices that i made because it very quickly literally ended the game and so if you get to this point you don't need to make these choices to see what i've seen um and basically there's a character named gail in the game and gail is a wizard and you find out a couple hours in that he basically has a magic bomb in his chest and he has to feed it magic items. And if he doesn't, then he will explode. And it's because of some shenanigans he did while fucking a god. Um, and he gets to a point where he has power over the bomb in his chest, so he no longer has to eat magical items. But the agreement is that he should use that to kill the absolute, who is the big, bad, evil guy in this game. And so you're talking to him and he's like, well, I should do it to kill the absolute. And you're like, Gail, you know, maybe we can find a better way. And he's like, I don't know. And it's just kind of this background trauma, right? Got to this point where it's the first time you're in the room with the absolute. And I'm about to fight him and like Gail steps up and he's like, well, guess it's time. And you're like, it's like, what are you talking about? And Gail's like, oh, I can feel the magic all around me. It's been a pleasure, but it's time to do it. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to explode the fucking bomb in his chest. And then there's like these this conversation where you're trying to talk him out of it. And I was like. F5 quick save. And I was like, Gail, something like blah, blah, blah. You're a hero. Let's die like heroes. And it, and it goes to a wide shot and Gail is just like, oh, and this magic energy goes and you see the bad guys. And then it just like, like, uh, like quick fades to a white screen and then a wide shot. And it's just like the narrator being like, Gail succeeded and killed all the enemies, but he didn't take care of the tadpoles. Not a great ending. But it is to our story. And then fucking credits roll. <laughs> and I'm like, and this is at the end of Act 2. And I'm like, that's fucking cool that 
that, you know, because I knew that of Gale, because he was in my party, that became an option and I could do that. And they had just enough for me to be like, here's a cutscene. Here's technically an ending if you decide to do that. And of course, I resaved and I went back, but it was just like the fact that this game has so many choices in it and the choices actually fucking matter and there's content behind them and the game's not going to constantly try and force you into that content no matter what choice you make. This is the best RPG I've ever played because it really is fucking role playing, folks. It's not about the things you can do while you're role playing. It's about the things you can't do or the things that are done or not done because of your fucking actions. And this game understands that to a T. Did either of you not to to briefly sidetrack, did either of you get that quest in Arcane's Prey where you can like no. <laughs> you can essentially collect like launch codes for an escape pod? Yes. And just get yes. yourself out of the space station <laughs> yeah. like well before the end of the main yep. story. I did wow. that one. That yeah. one was great because then you very early in the game discover what is going on mm-hmm. and you're just like, oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeez. Yeah, I did that and oh, that renewed my like excitement for that game. Uh, yeah, pray. Um, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, I can't wait to get back to it. It's it's a fantastic video game, and I agree with a lot of your points. Um, I and uh, I can't wait why to explode Gale. Why haven't you been playing it? I've been playing a lot of Fire Emblem: Path of Radiance for the GameCube. Um, oh. Plenty of that. I have helped. Uh, I've been messaging Jason at all hours of the day, and he gets back to me whenever he can. And he's always like, oh, I'm so sorry I didn't see this. I was like, no, you can just get back to me whenever. Um, I've just been waiting. I just put the <laughs> just, controller down. Yeah, I haven't touched it. Um, it's actually really fun. I love just like going through all the cutscenes, then just put a stupid TV show on and spend about 45 minutes trying to complete a mission where one character dies at the very end so you reload the entire mission and they're like okay let me let me do a save state after every single one of before every single one of my turns starts to see if i can do that and then you save state yourself yourself out of something so you have to then reload the save start over again uh it's a brilliant puzzle game uh that is what fire emblem is uh and um i'm really enjoying it so yeah that's kind of all i've been playing you haven't been playing starfield I, I I can legally say I've been playing Starfield. I I know you can't say anything about it other than you have been playing Starfield. Is that right? Yeah, that is the correct thing. I feel like we have enough of a connection. Yeah. That if I stare into your eyes for 10 seconds <laughs> while you think about Starfield, I will get all the information that I need about Starfield. Can we try that? Is that actionable? Is I don't know if that's actionable. Is that a breach of the NDA? (laughs) Yeah, can I call my boss? Can I can I look at somebody else's? Can I have somebody look into my eyes while I think about Starfield? (laughs) Pete Hines, Um, Todd, Todd. Let's try it. Yeah, do you want me to take my glasses off? No, 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 no. It might be blurry. Take your glasses off. Take sure? your glasses off. The information might be yeah, blurry. Yeah, yeah. Blurry's fine. I need you to be wistful. <laughs> okay. I need you to close your eyes. Close okay. your eyes. Okay. Okay. Think about Starfield. Mm-hmm. Think about Starfield. You're mm-hmm. playing Starfield. What have you done in Starfield? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now open your eyes. Look into my eyes. I guess okay. I am. <laughs> okay. Now think about Starfield. Continue oh, thinking, uh, about Star- thinking about oh. Starfield. Oh. No. Wait. Really? Okay, okay. I mean, I could... Uh, no, no. But that happens before... No. Wait a minute. Okay. No, I, I mean, I, it could go either way, really. It's a 50-50. Okay. Okay, all right. I think I got what I need. Thank you. Thank you. Embargo be damned. I can tell you guys all about Starfield now. <laughs> Next week. Next, Next week. week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was a good bit. Uh, Thank you. In all honesty, next week uh, embargo's up, so I can talk all about it on uh, Thursday, August thirty first. Uh, for those of you who want to tune in and learn more about Starfield, um, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, fun, f- fun, fun fact: it is really annoying playing video games when you can't just Google something. <laughs> uh, it is literally a nightmare. Hey, we should, we should probably stream early that day because. 
uh, the early access release unlock time is 8 p.m. Eastern on the 31st. Yeah. When is do you know when the embargo time is? Embargo, I want to say it's noon. I think we should probably try and stream right after work then. Yeah, we can do that. Um, yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I can't say anything about it, but uh, it's 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 funny after years of listening to like Giant Bomb and stuff talking about like them experience games before they came out. Uh, Baldur's Gate a little bit because we got that. I got that a couple days early, but especially this, the GameSpot channel for Starfield and us all being like this, this. Oh, you just do this. Wait, what? You can do that? Oh no, you just do this. And then like like basic fucking mechanics that someone may have missed for like fifteen hours, yeah. and you're just like, oh, and, do this. And that's your and to your point, that's your support lifeline because you can't yeah. Google. You know, Baldur's Gate 3, this mission, what does this mean? Because it's not exactly. out there yet. Yeah, like, I can't... I, there were a couple times where I started typing stuff into Google. I'm like, where is this? And I'm like, oh, no, nobody knows. So then I ask about the people at work, yeah. and they're like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll just keep playing. Um, uh, yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, it's really annoying not being able to talk about it, but uh, I just... I feel cool. Yeah, fuck you, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Todd. Oh, you can go. See that mountain over there? You can go there. Um, <laughs> you can go there. You can fuck it. Uh, moving on. Are we doing news? You want to do some news? I mean, honestly, we had a decent news week. I did not watch ga uh, Gamescom opening night live. Was there anything actually like rev like big in it? I don't think I know so. That Jeff killed a guy. That's yeah. right, he did. Oh, that was stop, that stop, is, just stop doing live events. Just do a pre-recorded Nintendo Direct most, style. I get secondhand whatever embarrassment, anxiety smoke. all the time. And yeah, secondhand smoke, and uh, oh, that hurt. It was, and and you know why it hurt? Because the guy was bad. He just wasn't good at it. Uh, Jeff? No, no. The guy was trying to oh, yell. He like ran up and like sort of went into the mic, and then like it it cut to a wide and like you just saw all these people converging up there but then jeff's just yeah. like shamed him publicly and it was like super awkward and I'm like what Jeez is happening Louise. um other than that there wasn't a ton uh zack snyder was super awkward as well um they showed yeah, a the teaser trailer right for rebel, rebel moon, moon part is his? one and part two his, his star wars movie that lucasfilm passed on and he was like i'm just gonna make it anyway his Star Wars movie that looks like him. uh that they really put mid journey to the tax on uh for for most of the film. Um sorry, I'm just looking stuff up. I realize I could just did he write this or no? Because that's the big question. Story by Zack Snyder. Yeah, I think I'm he wrote concerned. It. He's not a great writer. He's a great director. He's not a great writer, so I am concerned. Um uh, uh, but, but speaking other of than that, uh, there there wasn't that much mid journey. At least it's not the fucking. It's the Gareth Edwards movie. The creator. Happy Two. The creator. That's the one that, um, in the trailer, one of the VFX shots is just like heavily lifted from the Beirut explosion a couple years ago. Oh yeah. They just. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, they just took the Beirut explosion and like put like futuristic buildings on top of it and like color graded it. Nice. I mean, use reality. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good explosion. Say, Honestly, look, however, I'm just going to fucking say it. I saw the trailer for that movie in IMAX, and it looked awesome. Yeah, I was just about to say that fucking ripoff Beirut explosion looked a lot better than the fucking Trinity test in Oppenheimer, I'm just going to say. So maybe that is the way to go. Halfway through the movie, just they fake, do CGI over 9-11. Yeah, just copy. <laughs> just co yeah, just copy real life events, you idiots. It looks better. <laughs> Well, that was like that that bit. I remember seeing a VFX breakdown from Solo where they had like lifted or not lifted, but they took inspiration from like the slow-mo guys blowing up like firecrackers <laughs> underwater. And they did yeah. that for like a mountain exploding or something. It's good stuff. Good stuff. That movie mm -hmm. wasn't very good, but that that train heist sequence was good. That was good. That was good. Oh, that was good. God. Star Wars kind of sucks now, doesn't it? Andor owns. Andor's great. That's because it doesn't know it's Still Star Wars. It. It's, it snuck it it's in there. Real good. Yeah. I said, oops. 
Um, it's fake Star was, Wars. When I, there was like a period five years ago where for like an hour, I was like, if I had to write a Star Wars movie, what would I do? And I think the idea I ended up coming up with was just mumblecore in space. And I was like, so you can make a good Star Wars. It just can't be Star Wars. I, yeah, like, I feel like the key to making a good Star Wars movie is writing a movie and then just adding some Star Wars, like, trappings. Yeah. Or, like, setting a good movie in Star Wars. Like, well, that's what's, all yeah. to what's interesting about Andor is it's like... It's not it's not the main character from Rogue One. It's like Tony Gilroy's Rogue One fan fiction <laughs> yeah. where he's yeah. like, I really like this Cassian Andor character. Let's explore that a little further. <laughs> but yeah. It's a race. It's all good. <sighs> it is good. Um, OK, let's get into the news then. I'll hit the news theme. I haven't played it in a while. damn that's did, hot. um i can't tell if i have like early onset alzheimer's or not did we play the intro music yeah we did we all danced we to it we all I think you it. danced to it sorry yeah. it's the alzheimer's i thought no that's antacid uh moving on <laughs> here um uh, news. Is it Deep Blue Sea where they're give they're <laughs> big they're making Mako sharks' brains bigger yes. to extract something as a cure for Alzheimer's? And then what's his face gets eaten? Yeah, Sam Jackson, just, and just like Mace Avatar Windu. Two, Cool J, L O Cool J. Oh yeah, that's in Avatar Two. Is they're stealing yeah. they're stealing the whale, the whale glands to make people on Earth younger? What? Yeah, make them immortal. Seen, no spoilers. I haven't seen Avatar Two yet. Or no, sorry, not a mortal. Wilson. It stops aging. Yeah. No, Jermaine Clement. Sorry, Rain Wilson yes, is has been Sahara. Jermaine Clement. <laughs> is in, is We're in all Avatar over the map. Too. How have we not talked about World War II yet tonight? <laughs> well, in Sahara, it's a Civil War submarine that they're after. Submarine? Excuse oh, me. It's right. an ironclad ship. It is not a submarine. Oh, I guess, yeah. I, sorry. Ironclads are not hey, fully submersible. Boats are half Jesus. under the water. Okay. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Planes are just sky dolphins. <laughs> what? It's a Jesus. good boy. <laughs> what news are we talking about? Talk. You uh, can't fuck a plane. Hey, uh, it's a me, uh, not Mario anymore. Charles Martinet uh, committed seppuku live in Japan uh, <laughs> because uh, he's done playing Mario. I, I I don't understand this. So this is Charles Martinet is stepping back from his voice acting role as Nintendo's Mario. Uh, he's now moving into the brand new role of Mario ambassador. So he's going to be stepping back from recording character voices from our games. <laughs> I don't. So it's not like he's retiring. It's not like they're giving him a fond farewell. They're just be like, no, he's going to be a Mario ambassador where he goes to Mario events and stuff kind of like he's been doing. But why does that mean he can't do the voice anymore? So it makes me worry yeah, for what are they doing? With to the my mind, thing? travel is more strenuous than being in a VO booth. I know sometimes the yeah. voiceover sessions are not the easiest thing, but certainly worldwide travel is a bit more arduous yes. than a man yeah. of his age. Yeah. Tenu so, man so of his tenure. I said this in the discord. I think y'all thought I was joking, but I'm being genuinely serious now. I don't think this is what's happening. I think it's a possibility and it has me concerned. The Mario brothers movie did so fucking well. There are sequels upon sequels coming. Are they going to turn Chris Pratt into the video game Mario voice? I could I totally think, see them doing that. I think Will's remark was probably correct that at least as far as the video games are concerned, that's probably a bit hefty of an expense. Um, but I don't know. I could see Maybe. I could see uh, Chris Scat. Uh, someone who sounds like Chris Pratt. I was trying to make a joke here. Um, Charles, Charles Pratt, his brother. Yeah, Charles Pratt, his brother, does the video game voice version of him. And he sticks like I, I can see where I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, where they want to exploit the fact that ever like millions of children now associate Mario's voice as being ugh, Chris Pratt's voice. Um, 
and I think they want to exploit that. I just, I still stand by. I think Chris Pratt is too expensive, even for a couple. Woohoo! Ha! Hua! Uh, like, would they do that for the game still, or would they have him fully voice Mario in the video game? Yeah, I, I, I think we'll find out soon, though, because I believe I saw something on Twitter talking about how Charles Martinet is not in the credits for Super Mario Wonder. Even though those credits aren't fully released, they couldn't find anything tying him to Super Mario Wonder, even though I believe the trailer did have a little bit of Mario uh, sound. Hmm. So maybe we'll find out pretty soon who the next Mario is. Hmm. Who do you think? Someone famous. I would have said Gilbert Gottfried, but I think he's dead. I think it's just going to be some random ass voice voice actor. And Nintendo's like, I think I think going in your in your path, Will, they're like, we don't want to pay anybody, so we can't make a new celebrity. So we're just going to pick somebody that does the voice. okay, and we can pay them dirt. I mean, Charles Martinet was not a celebrity before the Mario gig. I mean, do you think? Yeah, they're kingmakers over there at Nintendo. Do you think they now signed they some go sort back of to the deal popper. for AI with him? I sure hope not. Oh, They've fuck. certainly got a big enough library. Well, yeah, that was my like. Found. Li- or it was my second thing was AI or library deal, but I feel like AI has to be in there in case they need him to say something that isn't in there. But like, I do you think a library deal that. that could be on the table? Well, I thought for some of the more recent games, they were just kind of reusing cues of his from other stuff i mean because there's only so many like lines like you said unless they're doing a, something fully voice acted but even like mario sunshine mario doesn't say sentences he's still just making the mario sounds um but um, yeah. yeah i don't know i don't know who knows we'll see what happens Ooh. um <laughs> moving on here uh Ubisoft, no, that's stupid. Let's I was gonna say, about, let's talk about Elden Ring. Yeah, that's where I see there's two Elden Rings on top of each other, and I saw Elden Ring and I went with the wrong one. Elden Ring, Elden Ring. Miyazaki seems to all but confirm Elden Ring sequel in Books of Knowledge Volume Two, which is kind of a lore book for Elden Ring. Um, let me see. Uh, fuck, where's the fucking quote? Oh fuck, sorry, I'm trying to find. Can you fucking find it, please? Quote? Where's where is the quote in this article? Find the quote. Find the quote. Save, find the quote. Save the. What's the Forrest Whitaker line? Find oh, the girl. Save quote. The... <laughs> save the. Excuse me. Save, Excuse me. Save the dream. <laughs> save the dream. Excuse me. Shut the fuck up. Here's the quote from Miyazaki in the book. Quote: Some lore bit clarifications and reveals are being saved for future games. That's pretty, well, that's we do pretty have a clear. DLC on the way, don't we? Hypothetically. We do. But also, he said future games. Sure, but... Not future content. Was not future he giving DLC. the interview in English or Japanese? Uh, it's a Swedish, actually. He was I'm not sure. It was, <laughs> I guarantee you. Hello? Probably, it's, probably, <laughs> it's probably in Japanese. Because um, I'm just... I don't know if yeah. the translation from games could be more broad than we're assuming it is but Mm -hmm. yeah i would not say no i would not i would not uh uh, say no to a sequel that's where that's where i'm taking the conversation what would you guys want to see in an elden ring 2 back to the tree even more gross little weirdos just a whole new world of gross little weirdos little freaks freakos do you think they're gonna do things do you think they're gonna do something so the 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 underworld in Elden Ring and the capital were kind of like reveal areas in a way mm-hmm. where you didn't really know they were there. And then all of a sudden it's like a surprise. Do you think they're going to do something similar to that? Maybe like alternate dimension or like Tears of the Kingdom route and have like sky stuff going on? Uh, the map, it's got to be a new map, right? They've always pretty much done a new map. Well, because I mean, it's it's I it's explicit that you came from some other the wherever all the tarnished were banished to and you have come back to the lands between but even just in the in the name itself the lands between implies that there's a lot more around Mm. it um but i can also see at least two other 
at like an least Oreo. two others. But like, uh, I know there are multiple endings. So I know there's one where if you do like, if you do a bunch of like frenzied flame stuff, you can just totally mess up the whole world. So I don't know if maybe they do like alternate, like a time alternate timeliney things, or maybe like you mm-hmm. were saying, like Tears of the Kingdom, it's the same oh. map but different. Oh, uh, different times. Ooh. I, I have a question, uh, and this may yeah. sound sound stupid coming from a man named me, but question: Are all the Dark Souls games the same universe? I think so. Like the same I, world. I think there's some shared continuity between each of them, but I I am speaking only yeah, as someone be, who has heard But it could be Final Fantasy. Talk about it. It could be Final Fantasy with a lot of shared yeah. thematic elements. Because that's the only thing I could think of is Elden Ring no, 2. But I think there's like kings that carry over from like 2 to 3. I Maybe. could be wrong. My, my King problem Sclave, is... Slave, King <clears throat> Lear. I, I think Elden Ring 2... <laughs> the problem with Elden Ring is... <laughs> Elden Ring... Dark, there is no dark soul in Dark Souls. I'm pretty sure. The darkest soul. So but like Elden Ring too. is about the Elden Ring. Um... So I feel like wait, it's, oh wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. As somebody who played like 40 hours of that game, what the fuck was the Elden Ring? It was the thing Oh, you didn't you didn't finish the game. Didn't the Elden Ring the is my point is the my the point game. is it's not so integral to it that you're like oh, they could have only made this single game because of the Elden Ring or whatever. It's, well, it's just about some, the Elden Ring. It's the whole game. Well, then about. I'd say it would be it, set it's prior just some, to Elden Ring cuz at that point the Elden that? Ring is still What's an the object little of power? It's just a little fucking MacGuffin. They'll come up with a new MacGuffin. Well, I, I'm just saying. My point is, Elden Ring Two. It can either we can either sit here and say it's related to Elden Ring One, or it could be a completely different game, and they just called it Elden Ring Two. That's mostly what Elden I meant. Elden Earring. Elden, Elden Rings. Elden Amulets. Elden Rings. Elden Cock Ring. Elden Ear Rings. Mm. <laughs> there's, there's so many parts of the body we could adorn. Elden young younger ring, <laughs> young Elden ring, <laughs> young Elden the middle young aged young ring. Oh, I was oh. going to Jude Law's the young pope. Oh, oh, the young poop, the two poops, the big Elden ring theory. That was a bad joke. I just, I, I gotta be honest with you. Please don't. I enjoyed Elden ring. I don't want to play Elden ring too because it's. I'm not I'm going to say this in the most pessimistic way possible, but it's it's going to be more of the same. Right. And as somebody who didn't finish Elden Ring one, there's no reason for me to play Elden Ring two. God, you are the worst. They're not they're not they're not going to do something drastic. They're not going to do something drastically different. And I don't mean that as a bad thing. But if you're not into Elden Ring, I don't think you're going to be into Elden Ring two. You're not. That's what I'm trying to say. Grimy world full of. Freaks. Yeah, but I, I don't think I agree because there's a lot of people who weren't into Dark Souls and then Elden Ring fixed that. So Yeah, but those are different games. Right. But so I'm Elden Ring 2 Elden could be a different Ring... game. No, because I think Dark Souls to Dark Souls 2, relatively the same game. Right. So but... I would not expect them to go uh, Armored Core to Armored Core, relatively the same game. I would not expect them to be in the same series and make drastic differences like they would between Elden Ring and Sekiro or Sekiro and Bloodborne, etc. I can see it. Elden Ring yeah, is so down. close to <laughs> to Dark Souls. All of it. Uh, That's true. Like Bloodborne and Sekiro are pretty different. Uh, anyways, uh, we want to talk about Sony's yeah. stupid portable PlayStation Portal. Yeah, it still sucks, it folks. Um, uh, it's two hundred dollars. I'm not going to play it. It is literally. Uh, you have to have. It does not let you play PS5 games through the cloud. It is basically just a way to play your PS5 console remotely. Your PS5 console. So your home internet better be great. And whatever internet you're using for this device better be great. It also does not have Bluetooth. It has a proprietary PlayStation uh, wireless audio connection, which they make it sound great. Honestly, super like zero latency is is a miracle, honestly, for wireless audio. But to not have Bluetooth, it, it's it, like I, this is two hundred dollars, right? Again, just to go through the specs, it's a way for you to connect to your PS5 console over Wi-Fi. So you can't even necessarily take it out of your house and out of there. It's just a way to play your PS5 console remotely inside your own house. What would you guys 
consider a reasonable price for this because it's not two hundred dollars, right? I a hundred at the most. Yeah, at yeah the, that's what I would say. Very too. high end. Yeah, because I'm not saying this is cheap to make, but if you look at what this is providing you, it is literally just a stream, like a screen with a network connection and a controller attached to it. That is not worth two hundred dollars. Why are they making this? Because they're I don't fucking know what, stupid. Yeah, I don't know who That's the target why. demo is for this product. I don't, not, I don't the, understand they, it. Mobile gaming is fucking enormous, and it makes more money than console gaming and PC gaming, etc. They think this is mobile gaming. They are fucking idiots. It's like they made it, and they were like, "Oh, we can't put it. We we are we we can't not make it now that we were making it." And it's yeah. like, no, you can. It's a sunk cost fallacy, like one oh one. They probably looked at the PS4, PS5 remote play numbers, which are which are decent because it's a free application and some people want to play their games remotely. And they said, what if we built a device around that and increased our margins on it without realizing that people play remote play because they're stuck into remote play in remote play situations outside of their house. And, the, yeah. and it's because it's free. This is this is stupid i'm excited in like a year when they're like 50 bucks in the clearance bins and i'll buy like four of them and i'll hack yeah, and them hacked. and you can like sideload yes. some shit onto them uh that's yeah. that's what i'm looking forward to like this honestly, is gonna be like the hackers thing like it's gonna be like everyone's gonna be using them okay. in like 50 years because they're just so perfect for something <laughs> I would I would pay two hundred dollars for this. I would pay two hundred dollars for this if it worked with everything. If I could steam link it, if I could use it with the cloud, if I could use it with my Xbox and I could take it outside of Wi-Fi and connect back to any of my consoles. And you basically have like a super high quality screen controller remote play thing. And I knew the, the, the Internet was stable enough. I mean, it's pretty stable at home. But remotely, it was reliable and people were giving it good reviews. I could see playing $200 for a dedicated stream cloud remote play device of this quality. But locking it down to PS5 over Wi-Fi at home is stupid. Yeah, I, I don't I really don't understand this. And the fact that you can't the Bluetooth, you have to use PlayStation's proprietary dongle to connect old stuff. Oh, it's so good. I love it. Um, I think that's going to be it for the news. Uh, unless there's anything else here you really want to talk about. Um, <laughs> wish we don't have a wish. No one put a little, a little spot. I just noticed that I was desperately looking for a game that I thought I, I had saved. I have a I game. I mean, I have a game I, can't, I can put on it. I just assumed you were going to put something here, Jake. So I should have. I, I whiffed it. Let me just check. It, it's in. My, it should be in my wish list. I have one hundred ninety. Oh, you know what I have? You know what I have? Here. Shut the fuck up! I have one. It was announced this week. Oh come on! I was two seconds away from it. Expeditions, a Mud Runner game. Oh no! They are making a Mud Runner sequel. Yes, it looks it great. Is, but 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 this one is more about four by four vehicles, so it's less about cargo and transportation and more about hey we need you to go scout this spot or bring you know medical supplies so it looks like you're building more about high tech tools drones etc to scout the locations and then using your 4 by 4 vehicles your broncos your jeeps etc um i'm pretty excited for this it's been a while since snow runner and i had fun with snow runner what about you will yeah they announced this at opening night live um I immediately sent it to both my brothers. Uh, yeah, it looks really fun. And um, that in tandem with the Mud Runner zombie game they're coming out with as well. Um, or like post-apocalyptic what? game. Uh, oh, I saw that. Yeah. it um, It's a great time to be a Mud, mud Running fan. Mud Running fan. Um, Man, so I, hope, I hope this has multiplayer because like the previous ones did. Because to. that could be a lot of fun. It has to. Uh yeah, wish list spotlight for this week. Expeditions Mud Runner. Go check it out. A Mud Runner Lost. game. A, a Mud, Mud Runner, Runner game. game. I'm so sorry. Man, do you a do you, do you remember Star when, Wars story? A Star Wars say, story. What a beautiful success story for Mud Runner. Do you remember when Mud Runner like was first came out in like super early access and I remember seeing pictures of it online and people being like, "Yo, look at this fucking mud." 
like I drove through this mud and I got stuck and it's got tire tracks in it. And to see that game like super succeed and have a very popular sequel and be still alive, even though it started out as just like a really small wishlist spotlight indie game, basically like what a weird niche little game that fucking succeeded. Good for them, bros. I love you guys. Do you guys know anyone who calls coffee mud? No. No. I kind of wish they did, though. That's good. That's Can we call good, that? Right? Like a cup mud? of mud? I had actually... I had, I had never heard anybody in person call a pizza a pie until I was hanging out with Kyle's parents. Really? That's I, fucking disgusting. Well, because I lived in California and Florida. This is not a place where, A, people are eating a lot of pizza. They're not places that are known for their uh, pizza. And they're not calling them pies. I will say, I didn't also did not call them pies until I moved here. And we call them pies now. You, you call them pies? Yeah. What the fuck is Cheese wrong pie, with you pepperoni people? Pie. And it's ironic, too, because I don't like pie. Like, actual See, that's pie. the thing, is that, is that the problem I have with this is that Pies, pie is a awful. very well established thing, and so for you to try and act like I'm gonna take the very well known term pizza, and instead Wait. of saying pizza, I'm going to use no. a different no. very well known food no. item that is not no. related at no. all. It's pizza pie. It's a pizza pie. Pizza. Yeah, it's because just dropping but pizza a pizza is a pie. It's got a crust no. and an underlayer and things in the middle. It is literally a pie. You can't saying i'm wrong it is a pie just doesn't have dough on top pies don't, don't have see, to have doughs on dough on top the only thing that's making me push back is the width and and height so it's of more of a pizza of a tart than a pie but uh it's within the category of pie possibly but i'm also gonna say hey go get me a tart <laughs> A pizza tart. Honestly, can I be honest with you guys? No. When somebody says pizza pie, it reminds me of New Jersey, and that just makes me upset. <laughs> like, that's genuine. I just fucking hate New Jersey, so. Ugh. You're right. The Sopranos was bad. Um, Have you watched it yet? <laughs> no. Did I tell you? We, I finally drove by the Bada Bing when we went to your Yay! wedding, and then we were driving back to the I airport. Would... I didn't realize it was right there. It was great. I would be happy to die without seeing that show. Genuinely, it's it it's very good. It yeah, it lives up bad. to its reputation. Yeah, it's a terrible show. It's great. You're it's right. very good. Yeah. Uh it folks. Has model trains in it. Excuse me. It does. No, I actually knew that model- because I've seen that scene and it ruined the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Folks, thank you so much for being here this week. Jake Terrio, Ian Gibson, the most lovely of loveliest people are here visiting me on my podcast. They didn't even want to do it tonight, but I wrangled them up and we're doing it. I did not want to do it. You said you were canceling. Somebody else canceled. Folks. Yeah, Will doesn't want to do this show anymore. That's, I mean, that's true. Uh, Folks, if you like Skulls and Dancing Ian, then you're watching the show for you because we got both on screen right now. Uh, head on over to subpixelfilms.com and bring you to our link tree where you can get merch. You can go to our Twitch, our Twitter, our Mixer, our anything you want to go to. You can see it there live. You can see all of our holes. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back uh, this weekend. Jake is doing some fanfic on Sunday. He's going to write up your fantasies and make it gross and disgusting. So come back for that and we'll see you all oh, yeah. next week. <laughs>